So I've been following 8-Bit Doe for a long time now. I mean, they've really come a long way with their controllers evolving over time, and they've done some weird spin-off controllers that I would call more as experiments, whether it's the really small keychain controller or the dual D-pad controller. They've certainly tried all kinds of different things. So I was pretty excited to hear that they were gonna be partnering up with Microsoft to create an Xbox branded 8-bit Doe controller that was seemingly gonna be geared towards xCloud on your cell phone. And this is what they came up with. They sent it over early for me to take a look at it and I figured we would try it out here, talk a bit about it, some of the good things and the bad things, and even take it apart to see how the build quality is inside. Now, if you go over to Amazon to check it out, they do have it up on like pre-order. I'll leave a link for all that down below, but the title is weird. It's 8-Bit Doe SN30 Pro for Xbox Cloud Gaming on Android. You figure they maybe could have come up with one that was a little easier to say, maybe one that rolled off the tongue a bit better. It's coming out September 21st and it's going to be on sale for $45 and it does include a clip inside of the box as well. So let's go ahead and open this guy up and check it out. And I said it comes with a clip. That is so that you can attach your cell phone to this controller because yes, it is specifically designed with xCloud in mind. Like that is the whole idea here is that you will take this controller on the go with you because it does have a smaller footprint than something like your Xbox One controller, for example, that has these handles. It would make sense that you might wanna take something like this with you. If you're traveling, it's just easier to kind of fit maybe in a pocket or, or a backpack or something like that. Uh, but we can see it does have design for Xbox right there. Funny enough, this does not work on the Xbox system. I tried syncing it up. It syncs through Bluetooth, so it will sync to your PC and work as a PC controller, which is really cool. It worked fine in Steam Big Picture for me, but it's basically designed as something that will work on a cell phone or a PC, not for Xbox, not for Switch, nothing like that. Now, on the back, it shows how the clip will function, where it has a couple of different hinges that you can loosen and tighten so that you get it into a correct position, and it just latches around the controller. Now, when we open it up, it's a very familiar unboxing for most 8-bit dough uh, controllers where we'll have all of the different pieces like paperwork. You have your USB type C cable to USB type A for charging. That's right, it does use USB-C at the top there, which is great news, obviously. And then we have our clip right here. We'll get to that when we actually attach the cell phone and try it out. Going back to the controller itself, if we kind of peel this plastic off, we can see it does have the uh, typical buttons that we would expect to be on an Xbox One controller. Same layout, A, B, X, Y, the same color scheme and all of that. Whereas if you compare it to like the SN30 Pro right here, we can see A and B are swapped. So they went ahead and just kind of laid out all the buttons correctly, which is something you have to do. You can customize the buttons as well, and you would, would be able to do that with something like an 8-bit Doe gamepad like this one. Uh, but the fact that it's all kind of laid out and themed like the Xbox controller, that of course, would help it uh, when you're in xCloud. And we do have the typical buttons from the Xbox One controller, along with our guide button right in the middle. Otherwise, you can see it's pretty similar. It is more symmetrical here. As you can see, uh, start and select had to be moved over a little bit on the regular SN30 controller. And it's also more smooth on the front with this matte black. And it's of course missing any of these Super Nintendo looking designs on the front like this indent. You're also missing the uh, four player indicator on the bottom here. On the top, we do have, for the most part, the exact same with a sync button, USB Type-C input, and then the same buttons for the left bumper, right bumper, and then both triggers. Now, while we're talking about these triggers, something I wanna point out is they have analog and digital settings for these left trigger and the right trigger. This is just basically clicky buttons. No, no, this has the ability to do analog triggers, which, which is great for racing games. For something like uh, Forza, for example, if you're playing that through xCloud, it's gonna be very difficult to play if you're just using digital triggers. So the move to being able to do that is also great. Now on the bottom, they also have a profile button and a star button. Now the star button will allow us to do different commands while we are playing in the game. For example, we can take the, the right trigger and the left trigger on the back and go from analog to digital. That's one of the biggest things. You can do it in the middle of the game 
game because it's programmed into the controller itself. The profile button, you'll be able to cycle through different profiles. And if you have things set up that will change buttons around, it'll just cycle through and you can have different configurations on the fly. This controller also has a fully customizable program, much like the SN30 Pro Plus does, where you can do all kinds of things like change around the sensitivity and the dead zones on the different joysticks. You can change how sensitive or how far you need to press the right trigger and left trigger. You can swap them completely and you can fully remap all of the buttons. It's a program we've used before. It's just nice to see it also attached to this controller. We also have 8-Bit Do's D-pad here, which is better than Microsoft's D-pad that's on their current Xbox One controller. Uh, it has an obvious pivot point in the middle. It's hard to press all four directions at once. So if you've used an 8-Bit Do D-pad before and you're good with it, this is a massive step up for you from what's on the Xbox One. We also have a little LED right at the top here, just above this guide button. If you press it, you can see it starts to blink. That would of course tell you when it's synced up to your PC or if it's synced up to your phone and you would just have a sync button here that you press. It'll start blinking very rapidly after you press it and that'll allow you to sync it up. And then we have a few size comparisons here with the SN30 Pro and then the SN30 Pro Plus, much larger of course because of the handles that come off of there. And then we have our Xbox One controller. So looking at this, this one would probably be the one that would be the lowest profile even compared to the SN30 30 Pro, although they are very close, obviously, in size, but this one does have analog triggers, so that, of course, puts it more in line with uh, either of these two, and it's obviously much smaller than them. All right, so now let's actually try the controller out with xCloud. I have the clip here that they send you. It It is a nicer clip than I'm used to. A lot of times we get, like, those kind of those junky plastic uh, clips that feel like they're gonna just break in your hand. This is not one of those. It has some um, metal to it, and it's fairly sturdy. So uh, for quality, yeah, this is probably a better clip than most of the ones you're gonna find on like Amazon that are like 10 bucks, for example. And, and it comes with the controller, which is which is nice. So we'll go ahead and attach it here. Looks like it kind of just wraps around and it also has uh, a locking mechanism at the top here that's going to sit in these two uh, holes right here to clip it in. Now, once attached, the clip still leaves uh, room so that you can access the charge port at the top and the sync button. So you don't have to take this clip all the way back off if you need to do either of those, whether it's charge it or sync it to your phone or a new tablet or something that you have. Otherwise though, this just kind of opens up here and it should grab your phone. And once you put your phone on this clip that is attached to this controller, the biggest drawback becomes very apparent, like immediately apparent, and that is it's very, very top heavy. We just looked at the Xbox One controller and the SN30 Pro Plus controller. Both of those have handles, which make it a lot easier to hold on to. This does not, so you kind of get this effect where it wants to fall out of your hand and you're doing everything possible to hold it without any type of handle there to help. Like there's nothing pushing against your palm while it's trying to go backwards. So like if I just sit it here, it, it's gonna wanna fall immediately. And it's this really weird, uncomfortable feeling. Like it's basically pushing into, like if you have your fingers back here, it's pushing into it constantly. Now I played around with a bunch of different settings, like trying to make it more like 90 degrees and it has two hinges. So I just, I messed around with everything I could, but Every time I would pick this up, it just felt like it, it wants to jump out of your hand. It's that kind of a top heavy feeling. And the fact that your phone is the first thing that would hit the ground if that happened isn't great. Now I've already talked about xCloud before. It, it's a good service for what it is. It's not the main way I would play a game, but I, I feel like it works well enough. So let me go ahead, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump into Forza Horizon 4 here and kind of drive around a bit so you can get an idea. So here are Forza, I have the volume up a little bit, uh, just so you can kind of hear it. The audio in xCloud, something I always notice is that it's like a little behind anything that's happening on screen at times. It's very easy to notice in something like Halo, but in Forza, for the most part, it's pretty good. I'm about 15 feet away from my router, obviously going wirelessly through five gigahertz. So the connection is good. xCloud is always like, hey, your connection's fine. Everything's great. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and start this up and we'll drive around a little bit and play around with the analog triggers. All right, so here we go. And we do have the, anal yes, the analog triggers are pressing well. So you can see I can barely push down and I'll get a little bit of throttle 
and then I can just absolutely crush it and and then throttle kicks in fully. So yes, 8-bit dough, putting analog triggers into something like this is great because it is still a pretty small form factor for having those. But like I you can you might be able to tell I'm actually I'm actually fighting to keep this phone up right now uh, while pressing these triggers. It's just the phone itself being clipped to the top of something very, very light. It's, it's just, it's very difficult to play like this. As for xCloud itself, it's, I mean, it's running well. I'm driving around. I'm not really having any issues with it. There is latency. You can feel it. I know people will say it, it, it feels perfect. And all this. I can feel it. I mean, I, I can feel kind of latency when I'm trying to turn or, uh, or kick the throttle in. It is there. I don't know if I would play online against people in something like Halo on xCloud on the go, but I could see myself maybe playing around with some, you know, single player games or, or if like any of the RPGs that, that drop on here, those would be great because you don't really have anything when it comes to response time necessarily. Uh, but for anything that's like super fast and competitive, Maybe not use xCloud, but like on the go gaming, even for something like Forza, it works well enough. I could see this as a good controller to take around if you're not planning on attaching a phone necessarily to it. Like if you have a tablet, for example, and you stand the tablet up, or if you have a phone that has a kickstand on it, I guess, uh, it would it would work well because it's low profile enough and still packs the same features that are in an Xbox One controller, just it's much smaller. That would probably be the best case scenario for it. On the back, they decided I had to use five small torque screws just because I, I don't know, just to annoy me. It's I ended up using a T6 and it worked out fine to get it off of there. But once those are unscrewed, we can see the inside. I do like the black PCB kind of goes with the overall theming and like the matte black finish on the front. I know most people won't see the motherboard, you know, they have to open it to see it, but I do like kind of keeping the, the theme intact here. It does look like our battery, which is a 480 milliamp hour battery. This should get 16 hours of life according to the instructions that they have. It looks like it's soldered directly in. So it's uh, it's not gonna be one that would be easily replaceable for a lot of people. You would have to desolder it and then solder a new one in if, if this went bad on you. And uh, it's unfortunate because it's very easy to get to. So if that was an issue and 8 Doe sold like replacement batteries that you could buy and just kind of plug them in, that would have been nice. The analog sticks unscrew from here and it's it's, its own board plugged in to the, to the board through this plastic piece here. Uh, they're pretty standard sticks. They, they feel very similar to what's in and the 8-bit Doe SN30 Pro and the Pro Plus kind of has that smooth movement to it. They are modular. We should be able to remove them. There we go. It looks like our Bluetooth module is here. And then this is our antenna to communicate to your phone. Uh, it looks like that would be kind of on the bottom left. Yeah, I guess you wouldn't really have your palm like this. So that, that's, that's a pretty good spot. All right, and we have our analog triggers here for the back. And what's really funny about this, after I remove it, it looks like they're using some uh, contact here between these traces. You can see it presses up against it. So it's, it's kind of using pressure to connect them, probably to save space. Cause they were trying to fit this, the analog triggers into something fairly small and might also be cost efficient as well to do it that way. But technically these are not soldered to the board. They just use pressure from several screws that are actually pretty long, kind of heavy duty for being in here. And with two springs on either trigger here, you get a pretty good amount of tension when you press down. It's not, it doesn't feel loose, for example. It feels like there's just enough force there so that, that it feels satisfying when you press these down. Now looking at the front of this controller, we have our D-pad buttons over here where our pads are, and they're kind of far apart, which is good for this D-pad because it will help to stop any false button presses. And of course we have a spike that'll go right in the middle there to help out with that. On this side, the buttons are very far apart uh, for like A, B, X, Y, but that kind of goes along with uh, with the shape of they have here for these buttons for it to work out and I guess fit in the hand a bit better. And then of course we have all of our buttons here uh, with our guide button and all of that. And it looks like strangely, there are some pads down here that are not populated. It looks like a positive negative, maybe for a battery or something. It's very similar to the positive and negative on this side. So I don't know if they're gonna repurpose this board in the future or they had an idea for this board and Microsoft came to them and wanted to do something else because it does also say M30 Pro main right there. It almost makes me wonder if they were developing a uh, like an M30 Pro for their M30 line, which is for like the Genesis form factor. I mean, I guess you could make a case for it. There's been enough space over here for multiple buttons outside of these 
these here. So hey, you never know. Maybe this could pop back up again at some point. It's an M30 Pro controller. Overall, I'd say the build quality of this inside is good to very good. The motherboard is fairly thick and it does not bend easily. It feels quality just kind of holding on to it here. And of course, being able to get these analog triggers in here is great. Adding an extra spring kind of adds that more that feeling of quality, I guess we'd say with that extra tension. So overall, looks pretty good inside. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for the 8-Bit Doe SN30 Pro for Xbox Cloud Gaming on Android. We might need to come up with a better name for that one, 8-Bit Doe and Microsoft, but the controller itself is good. Like, it's not a bad controller at all. In fact, it's high quality. The problem we run into is this scenario for it is not great, and that being attaching a phone to it. It's just not set up for it. It's not easy to grip and hold on to. Now, if the phone or a tablet or even your computer, obviously, is away from you, this makes a lot more sense. It's smaller than something like an Xbox One controller, so the form factor makes sense. It just doesn't make sense when you start doing things like trying to put a bigger phone on it it just doesn't have enough weight. I don't know if they can make it any heavier with weights to help out and counterbalance it, but right now, it's not the greatest thing to use for xCloud when you're trying to attach a phone to it. But let me know what you guys think about this one down below. Make sure you guys like the video on the way out if you enjoyed it, dislike it if not, and I'll see you next time.